King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He conquered sin and death, he truly has risen, and he will share with us his heavenly vision. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Trust in God, 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient even to death, and God Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, 
What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, You went to the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your, house I shall, in your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to, one, say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, you shall go before me to Galilee. I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over yonder and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without me drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. 
his betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss, he is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this is to come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, The high priest rose and answered him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He God. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said,
After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of, the value of a man with a price on his head. A price was set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him. Do you not hear those how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to be destroyed, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Syrian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by, by reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, Trust in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he is the king of the Jews. 
The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lena sabachthani. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many spirits, of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men who were with him with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, there were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linens and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in a rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. According to St. Matthew's Gospel, the last words of Jesus were, My God, why have you abandoned me? It's kind of scary to think that God's Son would call out that way. But he was probably speaking the words of everyone who's ever gone through some sort of terrible tragedy 
or bitter experience, feeling that somehow at that moment when they need God the most, God seems not to be there, only to experience later that the Lord was always there and brought us through. Jesus prayed, so we know that this is not an easy thing that he was doing. As human as we are, he was fearful of this terrible death, way of being put to death, because the Romans did it publicly. The, the landscape was dotted with crucifixions all the time for somebody who had been arrested for doing something. It was always as a sign to other people, don't try anything or well, this will be your fate as well. But Jesus didn't die as a robber, a thief, a killer, but he died as the reflection of God's love for his people, for the world. He died because all of us are sinful, and he died to atone for our sins. He died not for himself, but for all of us. And during this Holy Week, we'll reflect on how much we are loved by God as is witnessed by the sufferings of Jesus. Jesus did what we could never do. If God really punished us for all the things that we had done and we got what we deserved, we would be crushed. But Jesus, because he loves us so much, loves the Father so much, is love himself in flesh has really carried the burden on our behalf. But to show us how awful it is to sin, what sin does to people, what evil does to people, and how we need to turn away from that and to realize that God is always there. It's not God abandoning us. It's we who abandon God. When we abandon God, what's left? Nothing. Sadness, despair, what Judas did, but God is always there, and God calls us to wake up and to look around and see that God is there for us, that we're never alone, and we've never been abandoned. Let us not then abandon God. We pray the creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ suffered and died so that we might become the sons and daughters of God. As such, we can now pray to the Father. For Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, 
all clergy, religious, and deacons. May they be tireless in proclaiming the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may continue to call all people to enter into the holiness of God, which wants to bestow on all who draw close to him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have never embraced Jesus may come to know how much he suffered them for them and may believe in his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will receive the Easter sacraments this weekend, especially for our conferment, Elizabeth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the saving death of Jesus that the saving death of Jesus may restore in us a deep reverence and respect for every human life for which he sacrificed his own life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this holy week, those in our families and parish who no longer practice the faith may hear God's call and return. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we learn to put others' needs before our own and help our neighbor carry his cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be healed and the departed welcomed into the joy of everlasting life. We pray for those who have recently died, Irene Noda, James Crowley Jr., and especially for Gloria Intravina, for whom this 10.30 a.m. Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been affected by the weather in different parts of the country, especially the tornadoes. We pray also for healing and the violence in our own country throughout the world. The war right now in the Ukraine and Haiti still torn apart by such violence and so many other places as well. We pray that the Prince of Peace will bestow his peace on all we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer up all of our intentions through Mary's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Jesus Christ is the wine of the covenant, the vine of the river. Holy Spirit, I pledge my heart that you be accepted by your word. Sacrifice your sight to save me, please, and Jesus. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and in his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever, amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's we'll share with each other a sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those at home this morning, we'll pray the act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come only spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I will pray the prayer to St. Michael for the safety of people throughout the world. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, um, especially this week. Please take a bulletin. There's all the extra times. There's the times for confessions this week, uh, the times for the Mass on Thursday, or will only be at seven o'clock at night. There will not be a Thursday morning Mass, and of course there won't be any Mass on Friday, but there will be the Adoration of the Cross at three o'clock. Then the, the big change next weekend is that there's no five o'clock Mass on Saturday, but it can't start until sunset, so it'll be at eight o'clock Saturday evening. But the Bolton's got it all there for you as well. Now Tuesday at the cathedral, the oils which we use throughout the year, the oil of the catechumenate, the oil of the chrism, and the oil of the sick. They'll be blessed by the bishop this week. It will bring them back to each, each parish will receive them and bring them back. But the mass at the cathedral is very beautiful, very powerful. The priests renew their commitment to the church, to the diocese. It's everybody is, is open, it's, a, it's an open invitation. If you haven't ever seen it before, it is quite impressive. And you also get an idea of you know, how important it is that we pray for vocations because the priests that you'll see there aren't spring chickens anymore. <clears throat> they, we need your, everybody, we need your prayers you know, so that no one is ever without the sacraments. We take it for, for granted that every Sunday we come and there's a mass and we can receive the Eucharist and all, but if we don't do something to encourage vocations and help them, there will, there'll come a time there won't be anybody here. We don't want to see that happen. So this is all of our responsibility. It's not somebody else's, it's all of ours. And so that could be something that we sacrifice for this week and we pray for, that things will change for the better. 
and that no one will ever have to worry about what will happen in the future as far as the mass and the, and, and the sacraments are concerned, that there will be somebody here, out of somebody's family here, hopefully, that would be really great. So let's pray. And let us pray now. If you please do. <clears throat> Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, we look, O Lord, we pray, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go and live the gospel. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Have a great week, everybody. Hope to see you a lot this week. <laughs>